Okay, I wanted to make a video on the truth tables uh, because that can be a little difficult uh, just reading it straight from the text. So let's start out by saying we have uh, formal logic is built upon uh, A, logical constants. So these are things that have uh, meaning that is fixed by the formal language itself, like our connectives, disjunctions, conjunctions, um, that sort of thing. Then we have B, non-logical symbols. And these are those things uh, where the meaning is found in that symbolization key, right? So sentence letters. When we assign meaning to the non-logical symbols, then we can have an interpretation of the language of the sentence. And so interpretation, uh, we can define as correspondence between elements of the object language which is usually a natural language like English. All of our cases in this unit will be this and elements of some other language or logical structure. Symbolization keys are one type of interpretation. There are others in more advanced logical systems. Instead of giving definitional meanings to the sentence letters, uh, we focus upon whether or not the sentence letters are true and false. Then we build upon the possible truth values of the sentence letters to determine the possible truth values of larger sentences. So, for example, if we have the sentence A and B, or we can look at a larger sentence, which is A or B and not G if and only if K. So we can use truth tables to figure out the possible range of values there. Truth functional connectives are those operators that build larger sentences out of smaller ones and fixes the truth value of the resulting sentence based only, only upon the truth value of the component sentences. And all of the operators in sentence logic are truth functional connectives, so you don't really have to worry about separating that out. When we do truth assignments, we assign either true or false to each sentence letter, uh, and then we can build our truth tables. Uh, as we do that, we need to assign true or false values to all of the sentence letters. So something that you need to start to memorize is what we call the characteristic truth table. Uh, this is good to keep handy. So for any sentence, whether it's a sentence letter or it's a more complex one, in the characteristic truth table, uh, negations are pretty simple, right? So if a statement is true, well then negation is going to be false. And likewise, if the statement is false, the negation will be true. Uh, now let's move on to our a table that has the conjunction, the disjunction, the conditional, and the biconditional. And you can look at this table here to see all of these values, I won't just name them all, but keep this handy. Let's build a sample truth table using this expression. Let's start with our sentence letters. So for H, well, it's possible for it to be true or false. So we need to note that out. So let's write true, true, false, and false. And then for I, well, again, that can be true or false. So we want to write our table so that it matches up with all of our potential possibilities here. So let's write true, false, true, false. Okay, now we can write out the rest of the sentence. Uh, we'll use a double line to separate out where we've done our work on our sentence letters and then where we are working on the expression itself. Um, so you can see on the left part we have that same little basic truth table for the, the two sentence letters. And then we copy those values over uh, into our expression. So when we have H, all the way down, we'll copy over our H possibilities. And then for I, we'll do that each time I shows up. Now, let's go back to our characteristic truth table and uh, let's fill those in for the expression. So the, for each connector, we want to look at its scope, assign the corresponding truth values based upon our characteristic key, and 
move up in complexity until we get to that final main connector that will fill that in. And that's what we've done in this chart. Now, when we work through truth tables, if we're going through it slow, and then use that as a reference as we fill out the expression. However, uh, because that is a bit redundant when we write it all out, it's okay to just leave those out, to leave out the kind of side base table that has sentence letters by themselves, their truth values. Now a complete truth table, we're referring to a table that gives all possible interpretations for a sentence or a set of sentences. Uh, so that will have all of the possible combinations. Now, uh, let's look at how do we build, how do we know how many lines to put in our truth table? And how do we go about filling out all of the possible combinations? There's a kind of a simple method. To find the number of lines needed to complete a truth table, all you need to do is to count up the number of sentence letters, we'll say that that is n, and then take 2 to the nth power. That'll give you the number of rows. So if there's two sentence letters, 2 to the 7th power is 4. If there's three second letters, 2 to the 3rd power is 8, and so on. And then we need a method for filling out the true-false values. Uh, so the reference columns, um, we start from right and we move to left. So in the rightmost column, we start out by alternating true, false, true, false, true, false, true, false, all the way down, however many lines that we have. In the next column over, you alternate between two trues and true, two falses, and you, you keep alternating that down until you're done. If you have a third line over, you will do four trues and then a section of four falses and then four trues and then four falses until you go down and then you repeat this process each time you move over but how do you know how many uh, sets of true and false do you have and the length is equal the length of true and falses will be equal to 2x where x is the amount of times you have moved over in the columns so if there's a total of four columns, uh, the first one will alternate. And then when we move over into the second column from the right, well, we've done that once. So two to the first power will be is two. So you do two, tru <laughs> two trues and two falses alternating. Then you move over again. So we've moved over twice. So in that third column from the right, uh, two squared, well that's four, so we do four down and four down, we alternate that. And then if we move over again, that is two to the third power, so two cubed is eight, and so you'll have eight, and, and you keep going from there. So that's kind of how you know what pattern to use. And so let's look at an example. And so here's the expression that we are going to form the truth table of. As you can see, we have four sentence letters. And so that means to figure out how many rows we're going to have, we will take two to the fourth power, which is 16. So now let's set up our reference column. And so here we have the four sentence letters and then 16 rows beneath them. And so first, we are going to start with the rightward column, which is D, and we will alternate true, false, true, false, true, false, true, false. We'll keep going down the line. You see that we have that filled in there. Now for the next column over, right, we've gone over once, so that's two to the first power, so we have sets of two, right? So we see true, true, false, false, true, true, false, false, on down the line. So we fill it out C. Now we're gonna move over again. So we've moved over twice. So two to the second power is four. So we're gonna alternate sets of four for true and false. Now we're moving over the last time. So we're moving over the third time and now we're filling out the A's. And so since we've moved over three times, it's two to the third power. So that means they're gonna be a set of eight. So we fill out eight trues and then eight falses and that fills our grid. You'll notice as you do this that each time the most leftward column will always have a continuous line of trues for the first half and the bottom half will all be falses. And that might be a way that you can kind of double check, okay, did I fill this out correctly? Okay, so we now we have filled out a 16 line truth 
table that just looks at our sentence letters. Uh, but again, now we want to figure out, now that we have all that set, and we can copy it over. Now let's go back to our expression. And so we have if A then B, and then C or D, and then that those two expressions are uh, conjoined with the and here. Uh, so we actually have, in this one, we have four sentence letters. The first thing we need to do is copy over the sentence letter values. And so you see in this updated chart, we've added in columns for each element of the expression. And then we have also copied over uh, directly um, all of the set of values from where we just set up the sentence letters. So you know you can see D in the expression section matches all of the values uh, for the column D when we are now that we have that done we can start looking at the connectors with the most limited scope or that are the most limited in scope and so that will be uh, the conditional if A then B and then the disjunction C or D and so now we can take our set of, I'm sorry, not our set, our characteristic truth table and look up, okay, uh, how are conditionals set and how are disjunctive set. So now we can update our table like so. And so here in the blue, uh, we have um, that filled in based upon our characteristic truth table. Now with those, with the scope of those two expressions set in our truth table, we can now look at them. And so in this section, you have those marked out in blue, and then we can use our characteristic truth table and figure out what the main connector values are going to be, how they're going to correspond. And so that you can see we have filled in using the characteristics table uh, in yellow, we filled all of these in. And so this is our final truth table. It shows all of the possible truth values of the expression. Uh, and now in our next video, we're going to see what we can do with truth tables once we've created them for a given expression.